Hello and welcome to the Superintendent's Perspective. I'm Lisa Ayala with Edinburgh CISD Public Relations, and I'm joined by Dr. Mario Salin, the Superintendent of Schools. And today we have a great show. We're going to talk about a couple of things that are really important. Number one, we received an A rating by the Texas Education Agency. Can you tell the folks at home what exactly that means? That an A rating is, is, is simply a reflection of the, how the school district as a whole mm -hmm. did with the state assessments. Okay. Uh, the state uh, assesses uh, or, or measure the academic uh, progress of our students at grades three, four, and five. They, they measure them in reading, in English writing, and math. Okay. And then, they, and then grade six, seventh, and eighth, they measure them for progress in reading, writing, and math. And then in uh, sophomores, they, they measure the progress in uh, freshman in biology mm -hmm. and U.S. history and English too. And this is something that is... an algebra. And algebra. And mm -hmm. this is something that's prestigious. Not everybody gets this. No. I mean, that's why this is celebrated and why one of the reasons that we're, we're so proud of our district, especially... Many, many of our campuses receive A's, but as a district, mm -hmm. we received an A. C cumulatively, if the district got a 90, a 90 or better, mm -hmm. It's an A. Uh, an 80 or better, it's a B, and so on. And so our school district received a, 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 a better than 90 points in totality, and we received an A. One of the few uh, school districts in the Valley mm -hmm. to, to get an A. Most of the, student, most of the school districts in the Valley got a, a B or a C, mm -hmm. and we were, we were in the minority at Merck ISD. Right. There were other school districts, but, sure. but we were one of them. Mm -hmm. And this is a reflection of the programs that you've been working so hard, I think, to build and to, mm -hmm. and to enhance in many ways, starting with elementary. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The children living in poverty is, is, is prevalent in the Valley, and we want to we be a solution to that. Yes. And we feel that if we offer quality education programs, that's part of the solution. And, and then we want most of our students to, to go to college yeah. and to, and to, to uh, get a degree from not only go to college and attend college, actually complete and get a degree and move on yes. to uh, to a uh, meaningful job. Right, a high quality, high, high paying quality, job. High paying jobs. Right. Or a quality job. Sure. That, that, that uh, the students are, uh, are there choosing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that you did that was for the first time, uh, we've hired an early education director and that was really important to you and no. to the district. Well, one of our initiatives was to uh, add pre-K-3 to our programs. Yes. We feel that pre-K-3 Pre-kindergarten, three-year-old program is is uh, is uh, add to the quality and, and add to the choices that the parents want. The many parents want to send their three-year-old to school uh, for 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 several reasons. One, for they may be working and they mm -hmm. could save on daycare. Sure. The other and more important one is they the most parents know that if we start children. Exposing them to high quality programming, the sooner that we get started, edu high quality educational programming, the sooner we get started, the the better the chances that that three year old is going to be able to do rigorous work That's right. uh, at, at the high school and, and, and graduate from college. We feel that a three year old mm -hmm. will be reading fluently by the time they get to third grade. Oh, that, that, is, that is significant and important. And I think a lot of parents... Why? Because we have teachers, high-quality teachers. Yes. And aides in these classrooms. And, and most of our classrooms, the student-teacher ratios are under, under 20, yeah. which we feel is, is ideal environment for, for a, a three-year-old program. Mm -hmm. Now, on top of that, we added a, a director of early childhood programming. We've never had a director for early childhood. We have one now right. in Edinburgh mm -hmm. to help us with the uh, streamlining of the resources to the campuses and to help us with the director helping the principals address the needs of the of the early grades. Right, the curriculum and everything they got pre -K going. Pre-K-3, mm -hmm. pre-K-4, I'm sorry, pre-K-3, pre-K-4, kinder, first and second. Right. Now we have somebody to actually concentrate on those grades, what mm -hmm. we've never had before. Absolutely, and, it, and it's free. I mean, when, I, when my kids were little, I paid for that, right. for them to go to pre-K-2 or pre-K-3 or pre-K-4. I, we paid for it's that. Free. It's, it's free. It's free for any parent. Yes. Any parent. The only qualifying criteria is three or four on September 1. The other program that we added to the elementary level mm -hmm. is the after school program. Yes. After school, uh, ex expansive after school programming, be it fine arts, be it UIL, be it other curricular activities, co curricular right. activities, mm -hmm. such as robotics, such as esports, such as chess. Mm -hmm. 
music, music keyboarding, mm -hmm. choir, cheerleading, all these other, in addition to the UALs and, and the theater arts and all of that. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that, that helps the academics. That That's on top of that. So we also get number sense. They get map skills. They get dictionary ready writing, skills. Dictionary so. skills, uh, ready writing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that helps mm -hmm. them academically as well. It does. Uh, we feel that that adds to the academic program. We feel that adds to the quality. We feel that three-year-olds add to the quality. We mm -hmm. feel that director to, to help us with the early grade adds to the quality of the elementary experience. Right. You know, the going after school and working with a small group in math or in science or in ready writing or in spelling or dictionary skills. All of these, these uh, programs help. Right. A lot. The keyboarding, the guitar, the choir, the uh, cheerleading, all right. of that. And it helps feel. not only just with academics, but with them being able to communicate, mm -hmm. with them being able to collaborate with each other. Teamwork. You call it soft, soft skills. That's right, the soft skills. And that is huge. That's mm -hmm. huge in the workplace. It's huge in the classroom. It's huge everywhere. I mean, it's, it's it incredibly important. Soft skills are just as important. When you get out to the workforce, mm -hmm. soft skills are just as important as everything else. Yes. If you don't have soft skills, the, uh, the chances of the child... Uh, achieving more success or, or is, is more limited. It's Absolutely. limited. You got to have soft skills. Yes. You got to be able to communicate. You have to be able to uh, uh, accept a directive from a boss. That's right. Uh, you have to be able to take the directive and work as a team to solve a problem. You have to be able to take criticism, cr right. constructive criticism. That's, that's You've got to be able to, to, to fail mm -hmm. and get right back up and keep that's going. Right. You've got to learn right. all And we feel that. the after school programs help with that. Absolutely. Help. To produce a well rounded child. Right. Mm -hmm. And what about the middle schools? What are, what are we doing with middle schools? One of the one of the uh, uh, one of the aspects of our middle school programming that we're trying to improve is the the rigor. Yes. It's the rigor. Uh, we're reemphasizing the pre AP program at the middle school. Mm -hmm. You know, at the elementary school, we have GT programs. Right. For those ch children that are advanced academically, when they advance to the middle school, we switch, we. We no longer call them GT, we call them pre-AP. Pre-AP. Pre-advanced placement students. And it's right. more in inclusive than the GT program at the elementary. So one of the initiatives is to retrain uh, our teachers mm -hmm. in the teaching of pre-AP classes. In fact, we made it a, a rule that you could be teaching a class labeled pre-advanced placement math, let's mm -hmm. say, for example. But you've never been to a pre-advanced placement training. Yeah. How valid is that? Oh, that's going to be, you're right. No, that was definitely right. <laughs> important. So we, we told our principals, if your teachers are going to be teaching pre-advanced placement, they have to get trained mm -hmm. be, through a uh, summer institute at, at uh, most colleges teach yes. uh, these, these programs. Okay, awesome. Now, and then from the middle school, that feeds right into the next level, I guess, which is high school. And in AP classes, Pre is that where they're advanced headed? Advanced placement. Mm -hmm. an, an AP, an, an advanced placement class is a college level class mm -hmm. being taught at the high school. That's what it is. A pre-AP class is a class that gets you ready for an advanced placement class, mm -hmm. which students starting in ninth grade start taking. Yes. And then in 10th grade, 11th and 12th. Uh, they start taking pre-advanced placement uh, at, at the ninth grade, mm -hmm. uh, human geography. Then they move on to pre-advanced placement, uh, actually advanced placement pre-calculus. Right. Then calculus, and then you got advanced placement chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, advanced placement English mm -hmm. language, English literature, and on and on, almost all classes. Yes. There are many advanced placement classes, and we teach them all How about that? in Edinburgh. So at the high school, just like at the middle school, if you're going to be teaching a pre-AP class, or an advanced placement class, guess what? You have to be certified you have to be trained. trained. You have to be a certified to be able to teach those classes. How do you get certified? By going to summer training right. on how to teach these kind of classes. And, and, and I think this is something that teachers need to be continually be training on. Yes. So they can continue to uh, get the very latest uh, yeah. from, the, uh, from the college board that produces these, these classes. Because we want our kids to be successful, so we want the very best teachers, we want the very best programs. These advanced placement classes are mm -hmm. very rigorous classes. Yes. The college They're level. probably more rigorous than a college level class. Yes. I, I, I know it, and I was a high school principal, and it's very rigorous classes. Now, one of the areas where, we're, where Edinburgh School District is known for is producing AP scholars. Yes. 
That means, uh, how many scholars did we say we had this 150, last year? 153. 153 AP scholars. Yes. To be an AP scholar, a student needs to pass three AP exams. That's right. In any area, Spanish, uh, calculus, physics, chemistry, human yes. geography, literature, mm -hmm. uh, English language, on and on and on. To be an AP scholar, a student needs to pass at least three. Wow. AP classes, which is it's not easy to do. That They're is not very easy. difficult classes. Yes. And so Edinburgh School District had 153 AP scholars. That's probably one of the most in the... Probably the most in the whole valley, yeah. by far, not even close. And so it, it's just something that we emphasize, and we're re-emphasizing the, the rigor mm -hmm. at, the, at the elementary, the middle, and the high through, through training. Yes. Through, through targeted training in, in the areas of teaching rigorous classes. Right, right, right. You know, so. Well, that's so important. Now, the other thing that we talk about is CTE, one more program, because not, not all yeah. kids are going to go to college necessarily, so we offer CTE programs. We so. do. We, we're, we're close to, to completing a state-of-the-art uh, career and technology facility mm -hmm. so that we can offer programs to, to our students, those that are not going to go to college, and many don't go to college. Sure. Not because they can't do it uh, intellectually, but because many students choose to, to work with their hands, right. choose to be their own bosses, etc. And there's uh, high quality programs that, that we're going to offer uh, air conditioning, mm -hmm. welding. repair, mm -hmm. welding, mm -hmm. barbering, mm -hmm. cosmetology, etc., yes. etc., etc. These are high quality programs that many students uh, choose to, to follow construction mm -hmm. trades, etc. Right. All fields that are in, in demand. Yes, and they're high quality and high paying jobs. High paying jobs, high quality jobs, uh, very attractive to many mm -hmm. students, uh, computer science, computer sure. cybersecurity, etc. Yes. And so we're getting ready to, to, to open a facility where we're going to be able to offer a state of the art facility, mm -hmm. uh, these classes for, for, for the students that want to do that. Right. So you know, have, have something for those students that are not going to go to college, not because they can't intellectually, because that's not not They're not thing. their cup of tea. They right. want to do something else. So it's about choices, like you said. Having choices. the very Quality best choices. Quality choices. The very best programs starting from the very beginning, from pre-K-3, middle, high, high, and then even CTE. So that's, that's amazing. And we continue mm -hmm. to work to improve all of those programs. Improve the quality of our programs. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's our show for this week. And we want to thank all of you for joining us. And we have something, of course, very exciting for you mm -hmm. next week as well. Again, thank you for joining us this week on The Superintendent's Perspective. And as always, stay healthy and stay safe.